Welcome to Beyond the Spot. My name is Melissa Thornley, and today we have with us Christine Dudley, Director of the Illinois Film Office, which is a division of the state's Department of Commerce. Hi, Christine. Hi, Melissa. So, your parents were, your dad was a teacher. Correct. What was it like? What were you like as a little kid? I grew up really with a, an appreciation for the creative arts. My mother has a, got a beautiful singing voice, and I think I knew the libretto or to the King and I by the time I was three years old. I, creative arts were very much a part of um, growing up. My mother was very uh, cognizant. We watched old movies together. We watched I Love Lucy together. Uh, we, you know, went to see shows um, in the local theater community. So uh, creative arts was very much a part of growing up. You know, it's a ritual in our family. All the women go see Gone with the Wind. Um, you know, so the film and TV and entertainment um, have always, were always a part of my life growing up. When I went to Indiana University, I find establishment in Bloomington, Indiana. Um, I thought I was going, started out in, thea in theater and media arts. I soon, um, after a couple of years, I decided to move into the political uh, science department um, for lo many, many reasons. So I obviously kind of combined the two, the two sides of my brain very effectively in preparation for this role almost 40 years later. Well, yeah. Who knew that there would be such a... Who like, knew a there were film commissioners when you were in college? I didn't know. No. Uh, so the opportunity to kind of take that combination of my knowledge of politics and government with my love of the creative arts, but also my understanding, um, albeit a few years later, but I um, bring those two together and really to go into a, an area where we could, a growing community, and also be a problem solver. And that's what one does in politics. They solve problems. How does the Illinois Film Office and the Chicago Film Office work together? Is we work together very, very closely. Their charter's a little bit different than ours because that's really the evolution of special events and creative arts. We're in the Department of Commerce. Um, but Rich Moskal, who's run that office for 20 years so ably, um, he and I meet on a very consistent basis, kind of, you know, have a laundry list of things that we go through. What do you know? What do you hear? What, you know? compare notes to make sure that we're helping each other. Um, and then f some productions are a little more cumbersome mm -hmm. and maybe require a lot more pieces of government. They might re require a Chicago permit and they might be doing it on a state property. So we make sure that we are talking together so we are completing that those tasks accordingly um, on behalf of the production um, and making our checklists uh, almost for them. So, did you go get your permit from Rich? Okay, great. Do you, you know, right. we share that information. We exclusively do location. Now, certainly they're knowledgeable about it, but there's, um, we keep a uh, library of over 30,000 digital photographs that are constantly being refreshed um, by our locations team, led by Raul Esparza. Um, so we, when somebody wants to break down a script, you know, we can give them an initial conversation about what that's going to look like. Of course, we have many, many wonderful location scouts. So when a production then goes to the next phase, they're usually going to hire a scout. We will work with them, but we can provide them with a lot of information. So that our, that's what our office does. And over at DCASE, Rich also works with the special events on some programming things that they, in their charter, would be doing and we obviously play a role in how we can be helpful. What are some like unknown stories, unknown success stories? Like we know about Empire, we know about we know about all the big stuff that's going on in the well, city. I think the what are some small some, well, some small Well I think ones? the documentaries. I mean you look at Cartemquin and my uh, um, predecessor Betsy Steinberg is now executive director over at Cartemquin and you look at the history of Cartemquin and what, you know, 50 years in celebration this year. And when you look at the breadth of documentaries that come out of, out of the, the Chicago and Illinois community, you look at, and then that breadth even goes further, the University of Illinois um, in Champaign with Ebert Fest. So again, that ecosystem moves forward. Yeah, well, and it's driven so much great work to our city and to our state. I mean, the, the tax incentive and the role that you have, actually uh, on top of the tax incentive, the role that you have to reach out to businesses to say, hey, 
Illinois is the state to be in. You know, Chicago is a great city to be in. Like, what's do you have like a like a, a standard a pitch? Spiel, like a standard pitch? Oh, like sure. We talk about the assets. We talk about the tax incentive. We talk about the opportunity for growth, and that we don't have the density. We talk about diversity. We're the only state in the country that requires a diversity plan. When you submit your um, tax credit application, you also have to include a diversity plan. We don't mandate it, but we're looking for the ability to grow and, and make sure that there is a diverse, there's a conversation about diversity, but also give opportunity. I you know? love that. And we have seen that. <laughs> yeah. We have seen through that effort, it really has grown. People do have the commitment to uh, training and also giving opportunity. Um, so where do you get all the energy? Like where do you get the energy? Because and I the like it. I mean, it's the... important. It's like you know, back in my theater days. You know, it's like putting on a show every day. You know, you 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 got to cast it. You got you know, you got to read the script. You got to cast it. You got to build the set. You got to find, you know, write a budget. All the pieces of the puzzle that come together. So you ask, where do I get the energy? You know, I just believe you've got to know what you're talking about, and you've got to always find, take everything to fruition. And I just love threading the needle. Yeah. I love threading the needle and finding my way. And I've used that phrase many times in this because I just think it's important that, you know, you're putting together this quilt and you're finding it and you're patching it together and all of a sudden it's something kind of wonderful and beautiful I love uh, that. that you want to keep forever. This is the part of the interview where I ask you the three questions. And so the first question, you can take any of these questions however you like. So the first question is, where do you come from? Oh, I think I come from the heart. I think, you know, the heartland is where I come from. I love it. It's the heartland and so much more yeah, than... Yeah, the destination, we are the heart and, yeah. and the, you know, and the, the heart and soul of the Midwest in so many ways. And, and uh, so that's really where I come from. I come from that, that space. The next question is, where are you going? Well, you know, I've never really had a plan. <laughs> So that's a really good question. If anybody has any answers, please call. <laughs> um, I've been very fortunate, and I think if you do a good job and you work hard and, and you do remain informed, and I've, again, I've been blessed with great mentors and teachers um, and opportunities um, throughout my life. But I think, where am I going? Uh, right now, I just want to make sure that I'm doing a good job and that I'm growing the community. That's, a, that's the best answer. I love it when people are free to just answer it. In that I don't way. know. Yeah. So, what keeps you going? The joy uh, of the of the creative arts. Uh, in my world, you know, to see a film come to fruition or to go to a play. I mean, you know, I still you know get goosebumps during and during a performance at the end when the you know the ovation comes at the end of a live theater performance or you know going on a set and watching. Um, just the growth of you know something from nothing and the joy that it either brings or the sorrow that it brings um, or the lessons that one learns through the creative arts. Yeah. Thank you so much for spending time with us at Beyond the Spot. You are such a gift and asset to oh, our community. i do anything for a fellow IU girl. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Thank true. you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank and call you. our office anytime. Yay. That's what we're there for.